Hey you guys, welcome to this special, very quick paced. We don't have a brief time together, but Heidi St. John is uh, rocking the concept and the thinking of education. And um, my goodness, you have how many followers now? on your uh, platforms? Well, we just had 60 million downloads for the podcast and there's about 400,000 people to follow me online, so. 400,000 followers, 60 million uh, downloads since she um, opened up her voice for all of you uh, to hear her publicly. But because our time is so very, very short, uh, we are gonna run through some very important questions. Listen, regarding education, can uh, theology and uh, politics regarding education, is that a new neutral topic or do they go hand in hand? What do you say? Well, education is not neutral. I think this idea that the church for so long has been saying that education is neutral, we can teach from a position of neutrality, doesn't matter. Just put your kids in school and then send them to church when the school messes them up. Yeah. Except for you can't reverse that. And so parents need to understand those two are inextricably, they're linked and you cannot unlink Love them. It. Education is not neutral. Love it. When, yeah. when I, as soon as I asked that question, I thought of the toothpaste coming out of the tube. Yeah. It's you can't out, put it back. It's not going, it's yeah, not going back in. That's right. Yeah. Uh, next question. Should teachers be telling students how to think or what to think? Well, we know the answer to that, yeah, right? But, I want, I want but obviously not. It. And I think what happens here is that parents need to go, oh, no, you can't tell my kid that. Oh, no, we're not going to do that. And instead, we're not. We're passively sitting there. Why? And I think it's cowardice. It's cowardice and it's apathy. So the two, these two things that we have, uh, we've decided that we can cede the education of our children to the professionals, right? Because for years and years, the schools mm -hmm. have been telling us, you can't do it. Ordinary Jack Hibbs, you can't do oh, it. Right. Ordinary Heidi St. John, you can't teach your kids to read. You're not educated enough for that. Think of what this says about the public school system, that you can send your child to a public school from kindergarten for tw to 12th grade, but when they come out, they're not equipped to teach a first grader. Something's inherently wrong with that, and yet we bought the lie. Yep. And so we believe we're not equipped, and then the culture says, oh, and by the way, you need two incomes. And so you can't yeah, do it for this reason, you can't do it for that reason, and I think parents have slowly just pulled back, and we've given the education and the upbringing, really, of our children to other people. You know, it's amazing what you just said, because the, the COVID issue, here in California anyway, it's got a silver lining to it. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the school system's saying, well, we're not gonna, we're not gonna go back to school for a while until Actually, the school, the director until of education, after November. they actually said that, until yeah. uh, not until after the election. Uh, they think that the disgruntled parental issues right now are going to cause the people to punish Trump for this. When in our state, I know you hail from Washington, yeah. our state, it's the Democrats' fault. It's Gavin Newsom's problem. Yeah. But what's remarkable is think of the underlying or maybe not so much underlying insult they are issuing to the parent. Yeah. Even though you may be a Stanford graduate, you're an idiot regarding raising your own kids. Yes. You want us to indoctrinate your kids because we want to make them think the way that we want them to think. That's right. When they get loose. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, parents it shows need to that. wake up. Yeah. Yep. Wow. What can parents do right now to protect their kids from indoctrination in public school? Well, I think the first thing you gotta do is pull them out. You know, for a long time, so I've been speaking on this issue for a long time. So 15 years ago, I was, I was soft-stepping it. You know, I was saying, you know, not everyone can do it. I understand it's a really big commitment. Now I'm just like, the barn's on fire. That's At right. what point do you get the horses out? The Titanic is sinking. At what point do you say, abandon ship? Yep. And I'm telling parents, I know this is harsh, and some people are like, well, I can never do that. You don't understand. You know what I think we've forgotten? I think we've forgotten that God can do it, that God can provide that second income, that God can provide you with the patience that you need. You know, people say, Heidi, how could you homeschool seven kids? You know, I don't have the patience for that. It's not about patience. Mm -hmm. It's about perseverance. It's about leaning into who we know that God yep. is and saying, I believe that you can help me do that. So the only way, I think either for if my kids were in public school, I'd be there every single day. I'd be like, hey, my name's Heidi. I'm just going to pull up a chair right here, sit next to my Which kid. Which is your legal right, by the yes, way. Yes, and the, and the schools will tell you otherwise. Right of now course. here in California, it's happening. In Tennessee, my goodness, uh, they're telling parents you cannot even listen in to online yeah. lessons. Why? Because they don't want the, they don't want parents to expose to what they're teaching children. It's funny you bring up Tennessee, and I don't want to get off of that. However, what you're talking about encompasses the entire nation because... We've got friends that have relocated to Tennessee. They yeah. wanted to get out of California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're hearing from them now. No they had no idea that no. the governor had the views that he did. They had no idea of the subtle, quiet, down-home, southern hospitality yeah. infiltration yeah. of people who have left the West Coast to Tennessee. They took the thing that ruined this place, and they took it to Tennessee. Yeah. And, well, um, I tell you, there's no place to go. There's no place to go. That's People right. say, I'm going to leave California, or in Where my you... case, I'm going to leave Washington. Right. We just uh, finished uh, six weeks around the country. I was speaking all over the nation, so my husband and I drove across the country with our kids, and I thought, oh, if I just get out of the Pacific Northwest, things will get better. Exactly. No. No. No, we got to stay in fight. Wow. My goodness, I'm getting the warning. We've got to hurry up. <laughs> I need to hurry up. Um, what about this? 
Is, is homeschooling uh, a legitimate option for 2020? Oh, I think it's one of the only yes. options. I think one of the only options, yeah. Yes, and by the way, the public school system knows it, which is why they're terrified of it. Uh -huh. Go look at public school kids' scores, SATs, and mm -hmm. achievements. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be pretty shocked. Yeah. I was just talking to a homeschooler the other day who mm -hmm. went to Harvard. Mm -hmm. One of the youngest guys to graduate out of Harvard Law in recent times, he was homeschooled. Well, and these colleges are looking for homeschooled kids. That guy's they're name was Ben Shapiro. Nah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, what would be the outcome if teachers uh, wore cameras just like police wear cameras? I'm advocating that for pastors, by the mm -hmm. way. Uh, what would be the outcome of that? W tell me why you, th you, you, what would I, you do with that? Well, if, if so, if teachers have body cams. Think about this for a second. <laughs> the teacher has a body cam, and all of a sudden the parents are like, You said what you to my said, kid? Wait a second, what? I thought we were teaching history I here. Think it's, required. it's revisionist history. It's not history, it's revisionist history. They're teaching these kids socialism, yep. Marxism, they're indoctrinating our kids. And I think if parents knew it, yep. they'd be pulling their kids out uh, in massive numbers. How many how many parents know that their kids are now being taught that the nation the United States was created in 1619? Right. The 1619 19 project, movement, yes. the project, demonic revisionism. Yes. You said it. By the way, big fan yeah. of body cams wherever yeah. there's authority Let's do or it. little I kids. Vote. I vote for that. Let's do it. Let's what do, do you it. have you what do you have to hide? Uh, one more. We don't have time for one more. <laughs> I need to pick a question here. What is America's future if we don't reform public education? That well, is a scary thought. Listen, if we you know, don't. we've already lost the battle for public education in this country. Yeah. It's going to have to be. It's going to have to burn down to the ground and be it's started true. over it's generational, again. Generational, yeah. And I think the main thing we have got to do right now is tell parents, listen, the time is now. Yeah. It's not. We can't wait. You know, you can't. You can't go. Well, let me see what happens after the election. No, this is already in the school. So even if Trump wins re-election, which I pray to God he does, right. Even if he wins re-election, the schools are on fire, and parents need to pull their kids right. out. Right. Right. You guys, Heidi St. John uh, podcast is off the bench. Go there and subscribe and stay uh, connected with her. She's shaking up not only the Pacific Northwest, but she's here shaking it up in Southern California. And uh, we need this message to get out nationally. So God bless you guys. Mm -hmm.